Welcome to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Two hour rain delay in Ruston, Louisiana, but it is time for baseball this evening. Louisiana Tech, the host team, will take on the Wolfpack of NC State. Both these teams won convincingly in their opening games yesterday. A couple of high powered offenses squaring off for a chance to start 2 and 0. And what does that get you? Will put you squarely in the regional final tomorrow. If you lose, however, you're going to have to take on Alabama in the elimination game tomorrow. That'll be Sunday at 3 Eastern time. We said goodbye to Ryder earlier today. And we welcome you into our respective homes. That is Georgia Tech great Roddy Jones. I'm Sam Ravitch. Great to have you with us here this evening. All right, Roddy, so two-hour rain delay, and it's tough for these offenses. They like to get going, right? I'd imagine waiting two hours is not exactly the best. But nonetheless, we will still see some fireworks here tonight. Yeah, it was probably a little annoying for these two teams to have to wait a couple of extra hours, but this is the matchup that was circled from the time this regional was announced. Two of the best offense in the, offenses in the country going after each other, and Sam, it doesn't matter how late it is, we're likely to see some fireworks here tonight. Get the coffee, get the Red Bull going, because NC State has been doing the offense all year long, and they've been hitting bombs, and I'm talking five yesterday. Yeah, they were fantastic. Nine total hits, five of those home runs, the other four doubles. They don't do singles here at NC State. At least they did not in game one. It was an absolute uh, bomb show from this crew from top to bottom. Devontae Brown had two home runs. You got a look of him right there. They did it on the back of a Reed Johnston excellent performance as well. And they're going to have to repeat that today against a really good Louisiana Tech team. Yeah, and you, and you knew, Roddy, after coming off that NC, uh, ACC championship loss to Duke, they wanted to come out and, and really uh, get it going offensively. All right, for Louisiana Tech, they are playing at home. They're hosting the regional for the first time in program history, and they also have a high-powered offense averaging over seven runs a game. Well, they were not to be outdone last night. 18 runs is what they exploded for on 18 hits, and it was up and down the lineup from start to finish. They jumped all over Ryder in the first inning with three runs, but the nine-run eighth inning is where things started to get out of hand. And while everyone did damage, it seemed like Hunter Wells was unconscious yesterday. The third baseman was four for five, two home runs. He was fantastic and looking for a repeat performance. Fans at the Love Shack want to bring a glove or take cover out there on the outfield because we are going to see some fireworks between NC State and Louisiana Tech coming up next. All right, welcome back, everybody, to J.C. Love Field in Ruston, Louisiana, a.k.a. the Love Shack. And that is where the host team, Louisiana Tech, will take on NC State here tonight. Winner's game, and the winner of this one will advance to the regional championship. Brian Jennings, the right-hander, will be on the mound for the Bulldogs, the redshirt junior out of Texas. Redshirted last year due to injury, but he's getting the call here tonight, Roddy. Yeah, he's going to top out at 94-95. Lane Burroughs, the head coach for Louisiana Tech, called him the best athlete on the staff. He's got a really good breaking ball as well that we'll likely see. And he's a guy that pitched a couple times for him in the conference tournament. His last start was against Old Dominion in the conference championship game, went four and a third and one earned run given up. That, that outing was short because it was on the backs only a couple days after he threw 84 pitches against UTSA. But... He's a guy that's no stranger to big games, and he's got a complete game shutout on his resume as well earlier this year against Tulane. Transferred in following a two-year stint at Wharton Junior College. All right, here's the lineup for NC State. Devontae Brown left the yard not once but twice yesterday. This is an offense that has led the ACC in most offensive categories. A 285 team batting average. They're slugging at 500, and they're averaging 7.1 runs per game. Both of these two teams are averaging over seven runs a game. So question's going to be who can limit the runs here. And Austin Murr will start it off from the left-hand side for NC State, and he takes a called strike on the outside corner. And we are underway after a two-hour rain delay here. Supposed to start at 7 Eastern time, and we have now just had first pitch at 9.06 Eastern time. I don't think the rain delay is going to come into play very much from a mentality standpoint. 
other than maybe controlling the early game jitters, the early game excitement that's been building and rusting all day. 0-2, slapped up the third baseline, but foul off the bat of Austin Murr. Went one for four yesterday with a double, a walk, and a strikeout. Has really been a consistent player offensively and defensively this entire year. Despite some early struggles, has turned it on as of late, a second-team All-ACC honoree this year. And the 0-2. Up in the zone and lifted out to left center field. Long run for Parker Bates. And that'll get down and roll to the wall. Austin Murr, a stand-up double to start us off here. How about that dance to get it going? <laughs> well, it's, that's an excellent piece of two-strike hitting. Ryan Jennings gets that fastball elevated. And it's a short, compact swing. Just throw the hands in the barrel at the baseball and let the velocity of the ball do the work. Austin Murr lining it to left center field. And NC State still looking for its first single of this regional, but their fifth double since they've arrived in Ruston. Yeah, unbelievable. Nine hits yesterday, five were home runs, four doubles, and here you started off with a double again. So here's Tyler McDonough, switch hitter, batting from the left-hand side against the righty Jennings. First pitch, off speed in there for a called strike. It was that good breaking ball that we referenced in the open that Jennings is going to flash. He's going to have to use it early in the count. These NC State hitters are so good, so aggressive, particularly at the top of the lineup. The ability to throw that to get an easy strike early on is going to be big. And one called strike up and in there. Saw Tyler McDonough asking our home plate umpire if that uh, if that's the end of the edge of the strike zone. Steve Corvey says yes, it is. Still early in the game, feeling it out. Jennings missed the spot, but got the call. 17 doubles on the year for Tyler McDonough. He's got no two. Curveball in the dirt. Nice block back there by George Corona. Leadoff double for Austin Murr. He's on second base. Tyler McDonough, the sophomore at the plate, with a one-two count, was also a second-team All-ACC selection. One of the league-best seven All-ACC members on this Wolfpack team. One-two. Swung on and fouled back into the net. These first four hitters for NC State, Murr, McDonough, Butler, Tatum. You could even go down to number five with Jose Torres have done a lot of damage throughout the season. It's a great opportunity for head coach Elliot Avon, who's been a fixture at NC State for 25 seasons. No question about that. He has led this Wolfpack team to 10 NCAA tournament appearances in the last 11 years. One, two. Ooh, just missing for Jennings. Jennings didn't get the call there, but that's an excellent one-two pitch. I mean, it's just barely a strike. Tyler McDonough with a great eye to hold off on that, but that's exactly where you want a two-strike pitch, particularly an 0-2 or a one-two pitch. That's where you want it to be. An impossible pitch to hit, a really tough pitch to lay off, puts pressure on the batter and the umpire. Jennings now with the 2-2. Swung on, lifted up into center field. Under it is Parker Bates. And he will make the throw over to third. Tagging up there is Murr. The play at third gets past Hunter Wells at third base. And staying right on third is Murr. Something to watch that just happened on that play. It didn't end up mattering, but Austin Murr sliding slid through the bag and that's happened sometimes when you have a wet turf field so these base runners are going to have to tailor their slides a little bit differently than they normally would watch Murr as he goes into third base it doesn't end up mattering again because the throw gets by but when he slides that's a normal slide but the because you have a little bit of a slick track slides right through third base 
that's something to keep your eye on, especially early in this game. A slip and slide here at J.C. Love. Yeah, exactly. Here's Johnny Butler. Called strike up in the zone to the junior out of Illinois. First team all ACC selection this year. Leads the entire conference with that 384 batting average. A one. Big hack. Swing right through it at 83 miles an hour, 2. Johnny Butler has struggled a little bit as of late. Only 3 for 15 in the ACC tournament. And while he did reach base twice via the walk yesterday, did not have a hit in two official at bats. So his bat has been a little cool here lately. Crowd getting loud early. Sold out crowd here in Ruston. Foul tip out of play. Great to see this crowd here and so excited to have Louisiana Tech hosting for the first time, getting to see their Bulldogs sold out this entire weekend. Go to the Butler and he fouls it off. Again, something to keep in mind. We talked about it earlier on in this regional, but this was a town that was devastated by a tornado in april of 2019 it destroyed this entire ballpark they had to rebuild from the ground up they have done so and now they are hosting a regional one of the best stories in all of college baseball a two ground ball to the right side past the diving manny garcia and into right field that's going to score austin murr butler up to second and an rbi double to give nc state a one nothing lead The fireworks have started early for NC State. Johnny Butler laces this one down the line just past Manny Garcia. That big hop likely helped, and he's able to motor around to second base. A pair of doubles gets NC State on the board in this 1-0 matchup. Here's Terrell Tatum now, the designated hitter, trying to keep the doubles rally going in the first. 16th pitch for Jennings, runner takes off, it's grounded to the right side. Taylor Young, just in time to get the speedy Terrell Tatum. Up to third will go Johnny Butler, and there are two gone. There's that defense for Louisiana Tech, and George Corona calling the pitches right now. An experienced catcher, this is a very experienced and old team. They have a couple of six-year players on this team that have been around the game of college baseball and a very experienced bunch. The George Corona manicure kind of looks like yours, Ravi. <laughs> he went with the, the orange last night. He's, he's going back to the orange tonight, too. It worked pretty well last night. Yeah, exactly. Call strike to Torres, one and one. Jose Torres, one of the most highly thought of prospects in the NC State lineup. Pops one up, out to center field, and ranging over into right field is Bates, and he will make the catch. But NC State strikes first here. A couple of doubles, they lead one to nothing. Welcome back. So NC State strikes first in the top of the first. Sam Heifel, the freshman from Apex, North Carolina, 6'3", 2'11", will get the ball here for the Wolfpack. A good year, six wins, 4'2", 4, 4 ERA, and 74 in a third innings pitch. What can we see from Sam Heifel tonight, Roddy? Well, that fastball is going to be in the low 90s with an excellent changeup, a good breaking ball as well. Elliot Avent told us, Look, I, I think Sam Heifel is a is a younger version of Reed Johnson, so he feels like Heifel has the potential to be that same sort of dominant starter. He was excellent in his last appearance in the ACC tournament, six and a third against Georgia Tech. 
over that time, five strikeouts and only four hits given up and one earned run for the second year freshman. He's one of these COVID freshmen that got some experience last year, but this is his first trip through the ACC. Look at the uh, Louisiana Tech Bulldog batting order. Team that put up only 18 runs yesterday. Taylor Young, 80 runs on the year. That leads all of Division I baseball. Hunter Wells broke record after record last night with the nine RBIs. He is now the program's hit leader. So let's see if the Bulldogs can return serve here in the bottom of the first inning. And it all starts with Taylor Young. One of the players, head coach Lane Burroughs, says is one in a million. Named Conference USA's Defensive Player of the Year. First team all-conference, a 336 batting average and 18 doubles. You can already hear it. This crowd is into it. They are vocal. They're going to let their opinions be known, but... This place is ready to explode if Louisiana Tech is able to get anything going. Young goes down 0-2 early. Here's Lane Burroughs, who's been responsible for building this program back to an NCAA regional, has coached this team through two of the most tumultuous seasons in Tech history. Of course, the COVID season everyone went through last year, but of course the tornado that we mentioned in April of 2019 and he has been able to steer them through it all. Just outside, count evens two and two to Young. And you can really tell that guys like Hunter Wells, guys like Taylor Young at the plate, really mean a lot to Lane Burroughs because of all the trials and tribulations that this organization's been through. But the cheese there thrown in by Heifel and a strikeout to start out his evening. Go up in the zone with the fastball. Young swings right through it. It's an excellent sequence of pitches for Sam Heifel. Testing the edges of the zone and then eventually going upstairs for the punch out pitch. Here's Hunter Wells now. Curveball bent in there for a strike. 272 career hits for Hunter Wells. 375 batting average. Redshirt senior, first team all conference this year in the 01. Foul tipped at the plate 0 and 2. Good start for Sam Highville against some really dangerous bats at the top of this order. Yeah, we had a chance to catch up with Hunter Wells after the game yesterday, and I asked him what he was seeing at the plate. He said, to be honest with you, I saw a lot of fastballs. He was sitting on them and raked them. Well, he hadn't seen a single fastball from two pitches from Sam Highfield, and I don't expect he'll see a ton of them today. Yeah, no question. Four for five yesterday, the two home runs, nine RBIs. 13 long balls on the year now. 0-2. High and away. Fastball was high and out, but it's a good setup pitch if you're going to try and flip a backdoor breaking ball here. Start it in the exact same plane, have it break over the edge of the plate. with an incredibly memorable day yesterday. Can only imagine the emotions that he had after the game, becoming Louisiana Tech's all-time leader in hits for a career. Nine RBIs on the day. Slipped out of the hand there of Heifel. And the count runs full at three and two. He also broke his own record of single season hits last night. Now has 94 on the year. Payoff. This one ripped out to center field. Long run back there for McDonough, and it's off the top of the wall. And it comes back into center field. One out double for Wells. That stays hot for the redshirt senior. 
uh, can confirm Hunter Wells mashes fastballs. This ball in the outer half is absolutely crushed to center field off the wall. McDonough thought he had a beat on it and just ran out of room. Wells glides into second base. Fired up for his team, this high-powered offense. Look, this matchup, uh, I know we're not even through uh, an entire inning, but this matchup offensively is uh, starting to already live up to it. Saw two doubles by NC State in the top half of this inning. We see a double from Wells there. Here's Parker Bates, the senior from Tyler, Texas, who also left the yard yesterday, and he takes a fastball up in the zone. Hi, Phil. And called strike two. This Louisiana Tech team making their ninth NCAA tournament appearance, first since 2016. This is a crew, as you mentioned earlier, incredibly experienced, incredibly old. It's three 60 year seniors in this lineup that regularly contribute. through a very difficult league in Conference USA. Grind of a schedule playing four games every weekend. One of the best teams in the country. How about those numbers with runners in scoring position there? 430 average, six homers, 53 RBIs. That's down two and two. So now we've seen a couple of 0-2 counts and Louisiana Tech batters Working them back even. Yeah, and, and Heifel got Young swinging on a ball up in the zone that was likely ball, or, or a, 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 was likely not a strike to Taylor Young, but Hunter Wells and Parker Bates have been very disciplined in letting those go by. And a 3-2 count. Same situation you had to Hunter Wells. Had to come back with the fastball and Wells crushed it. Let's see what he does here with Parker Bates. Wells on second. Here's the payoff again. That's slowing in. Ball four. Heifel's been susceptible to a little bit this year. It's been the walks. He got the 68 strikeouts, but uh, 22 walks on the year. Not terrible numbers, but it, it has been a problem at times. It has, and that's sometimes you have that with a young pitcher. But over the last few outings, he's been able to avoid that for the most part. Did walk three against Georgia Tech, but then in the two starts before that, Florida State and Pitt only walked one in each of those. Quick meeting from pitching coach Clint Chrysler. But this is where the walks really hurt you, right, Roddy? I mean, if you give free passes to this Louisiana Tech offense, they're going to make you pay. Yeah, that's the, that's the danger. I mean, you are playing with fire when you put runners on base against Louisiana Tech, particularly a team that's been as hot as they have over the last... Well, really the entire season, but certainly the conference tournament, they were as hot as anybody. Steel Netterville from Shreveport, Louisiana. It's a couple miles away from Ruston in the northern part of the state. First and second, one gone. Just a bit low. 
One and one. Netterville one for three yesterday, scored two runs and also walked twice. 280 average on the year with 10 home runs. Second on the team. Pops one up. Shallow right field. Could be a tough play here. Nice play made by JT Jarrett. And he's been doing that all year long. It's actually Austin Murr from first base. Or Murr, excuse me, the shift was on it. there. Yeah, yeah, they've got the shift on, and so the only hope really was Murr. Uh, JT Jarrett probably would have had a shot at it as well, but but Austin Murr able to wrangle that ball in, and NC State one out away from getting out of the inning. That was a really good fastball from Sam Highfield, though. Buried it down in on the hands of Steele Netterville. It's an excellent pitch at an excellent time. So here's Cole McConnell. Fastball away to the sophomore from Beaumont, Texas. That shift being on with Steel Netterville. NC State defensively a very aggressive team when it comes to defensive positioning. We'll see shifts for a lot of different hitters today. Here's a look at that shift. We, we saw quite a few of them yesterday as well, and they seem to work out uh, against Alabama. Going with the scouting report, Jose Torres, the shortstop, just barely on the third base side of second base. McConnell, a good Conference USA tournament, went 7 for 28. Did go 0 for 5 in the championship game, lost to Old Dominion. Two one line foul out of play. If you're Sam Highfield, had a number of 3-2 counts already this inning, a couple of them. Hunter Wells ended up lacing one to center field. Parker Bates got a walk after a 3-2 count. I think I'd want to see him come right after Cole McConnell, whether it be with the backdoor breaking ball or that fastball. And the ball deposited into the seats to stay alive at 2-2. Two and two. Told us he's got a good changeup as well. I've not seen that yet. A pitch particularly effective to left-handed hitters. Already 25 pitches in the inning, 26. Another foul ball. Good at bat here from Cole McConnell, the sophomore. Already in this game, you can feel the tension with these pitches. I mean, this feels like playoff baseball in every situation is going to feel huge. This one, the inside part of the bat to play at third base. Did he get the tag on it? He did. Voita Mensi tagged the bag. Lane Burroughs is standing right there and immediately having some words. Hunter Wells thought he was safe. It was a kind of an awkward play for the third baseman, Mensik. But the call on the field was out. And Ravi, I thought he touched it with his hand. Oh, yeah, sure yeah. does. Yeah, it's got it in his glove, touches it with his hand. So while it looked awkward, it was effective. And that'll take us to the second inning. All right, so welcome back. And the umpires have taken a look at this and are currently taking a look at it. Wojtem Mensik grabbed the ball, touched the third base bag with his right hand with the ball in his glove. And clearly it's, beat Hunter Wells there. 
it seems pretty clear on, on what this call is going to be. And it is going to, going to be confirmed out at third base. Alright, so call on the field is going to stand. So let's and, talk and a little I, and, about and, this. The, go ahead, Roddy. Go ahead. Yeah, Ravi. I was I was going to say. I, I think we were going the same place with this. Uh, this had to be initiated by a coach's challenge. The, yes. The, the umpires only can initiate a a force play, a tag call, in the last two innings or extra innings. So Lane Burrow's opting to challenge this. You only get two of those a game, and because he got that one, because he was on the wrong side of that one, it was not overturned, he loses that challenge for the rest of the game. So Louisiana Tech going forward only with one challenge until the last two innings, and then the umpires can come in and review some of these calls. Uh, but a, a crucial, one of those things that's currency in this. I mean, uh, challenges are crucial. Lane Burroughs down one after that, uh, after that coach's challenge. So the Bulldogs are able to get the double from Hunter Wells and the single from Bates and can't make anything of it. So here's a look at our bracket. We said farewell to Ryder earlier today as they went two and out, losing to Alabama in the elimination game earlier today. The loser of this game here will play Alabama tomorrow at 3 Eastern time. The loser of that one will go home. The winner will advance to play in the regional final. And because they already had the one loss, they will have to win two against the winner of tonight's game. Again, double elimination here in this regional. Uh, probably one of the more maybe surprising stories of regional play so far has been the play of Florida. They went down to South Florida earlier um, and then lost today in what was an absolute rout by South Alabama. 19 to 1 to knock Florida out of their own regional. Um, the unanimous preseason number one team, Florida, falling out of the regional. They, they have had an up and down season in the SEC. Their fielding was a question mark all year long. Um, and then showing up in their regional and going two and out. That's a bit of a surprise, Roddy. Yeah, to add insult to injury or to add insult to defeat in that one. See Ryan Jennings gets Luca Tresh swinging, but Florida had a, a rain delay of their own while down 19 to one late in the game. So they had to sit there and think about it, then come back and finish that game. Uh, but incredibly surprising to see Florida bow out this quickly. Here's Devontae Brown, the junior from Noonan, Georgia. And what a game he had yesterday. Two for three. Two home runs. Now 11 on the year. It's a called strike from Jennings on the outside corner. 24 pitches now for Ryan Jennings. Through an inning and third. This one hit hard towards second on one hop. Taylor Young is there. And two gone. Well, it sounded like it was off the end of the bat a little bit, but Devontae Brown is still being able to hit it hard just right at the second baseman, Young. And in his second inning, Ryan Jennings cruising a little bit here at the Love Shack. Voita Mensik, sophomore from the Czech Republic. Only player in the starting lineup yesterday that did not reach base safely. Bunt popped up, foul territory, it'll drop. Minchik, a great story. Uh, Elliot Avent told us that Minchik was playing on a team that, that they scrimmaged in, a, uh, in the fall a few years ago, and they absolutely fell in love with him there and gave him the opportunity to come over and 
play for the Wolfpack. He described him as an absolute worker. I mean, he's come in and just put his head down. He's a good defender, athletic. Really fits in with the identity of this Wolfpack team. A one, pumped in for strike two. Yeah, Coach Avent said it's it's been a work in progress, of course, coming over from the Czech Republic and getting thrown into a very difficult league in the ACC. It's not been easy, but uh, he has worked really hard and as hard as any player he's ever coached. Venture, venture to say that if he's not the only one, he's one of only a handful of players in the uh, in college baseball from the Czech Republic. That's probably a fair assessment there. <laughs> Fouls that one out of play. Stays alive at 0 and 2. I think Ryan Jennings has looked incredibly confident this inning. He's throwing that fastball, locating it well. Seems sprinkling the off speed. Jennings deals. It's down. Nobody aboard, so no damage done there. As this game progresses, Roddy, what are you going to be looking at most? Because you have so many players that can leave the yard on one swing of the bat, but what are you going to be focused on as we move through the middle innings of this game? I think it's really going to be execution and two-strike counts. Who's better in those situations? One, two, three, inning turned in by Ryan Jennings there. There, through one and a half, NC State up once enough. All right, welcome back, NC State on top, one to nothing here in this winner's game over the host team, Louisiana Tech. Here's what we were talking about earlier, April 2019. Uh, a tornado ripped through Ruston, Louisiana and just demolished this baseball field. It was uh, a rebuild that they had to go through over the last two years. They ended up playing games on Ruston High School field. They weren't even priority there. They got kicked off by the high school team and had to come back <laughs> and play later on. Here is kind of a fast track of the rebuild, and it is an amazing facility, and it is sold out, packed to the brim this weekend for the first time in program history. They are hosting a regional here in Ruston. It is a great story, a story of willpower, a story of a team that has stuck together. There were players on this team that Lane Burrow said they could have easily left. They could have transferred. They could have gone elsewhere, but they stayed, and they stayed to build this program to what it is today. This group elected to stay. They, they stayed despite not having a locker room, despite not having a clubhouse to hang out in despite not having any of the amenities that most division one teams have and they didn't even get on this field to be able to practice in their building until february of this year just weeks before they played their first game here it's an incredible test of resilience incredible test of wills a team that really enjoys each other and a community that they're playing for. And that, and that, I think, was one of the biggest things that we took from our conversation with Lane Burroughs. Yeah. No question there. They're playing a lot more, for a lot more than just uh, this team. They're playing for the community in Ruston. One, two, this ball flied out to right field. Devontae Brown ranging over, makes the catch in fair territory. Baseball team was on the road when the tornado hit. Uh, again, there's so much damage, about 15, 20 million dollars worth. Six or seven of the players' cars were totaled. And it was just devastating coming back. I can only imagine what that was like walking on that field, their home field, like feeling that your home was just destroyed. It's, I can't even imagine what these players in this town have been through. And, at least enjoying a regional here. S starting to see the flowers bloom. It's such a great fan base. And here this morning, head coach Lane Burroughs, 10.30 local time. You got fans around the corner. He's out there handing oh, yeah. out donuts. 
the fans who have been waiting out there for quite a while to get in and see their Bulldogs play. That's the relationship that this team has with this community. Uh, the community waiting for hours to make sure they get a spot in the Love Shack tonight for this game and support their Bulldogs. And, and Lane Burroughs letting them know how much they're appreciated by going out, saying thank you, giving them donuts. I mean, this, this community is a tight-knit community. It's a small town in northern Louisiana, and they love their Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. George Corona, sophomore from Miami, Florida. 280 batting average. We saw the Corona signs up in the box seats yesterday. I believe they will make a, another pair. There they are. There they are. Tell you what, that, was, uh, that box was club love shot last night as <laughs> yeah. Louisiana Tech was putting up 18 hits. He's dancing, waving to the signs. These ladies loving every minute of it. Hoping the Bulldogs can put up a similar performance. Two balls, two strikes to the catcher. Was drafted in the 39th round of the 2019 draft by the Royals. Opted to come to Louisiana Tech instead. Takes ball three. I'll tell you what, early in this game, Louisiana Tech has really made Sam Heifel work. He's already up to 37 pitches here in the second inning. It's the third time a batter has seen a 3-2 count. Every Louisiana Tech batter has seen at least three pitches. Corona just missing that one. Maybe caught it. The inside part of the bat, but two gone here on a pair of flyouts in the bottom of the second. There's Philip Matulia, junior out of Houston, Texas. Really good outfielder as are all three outfielders for this Bulldog team. Petulia may have the best hair, though. I mean, that's like yeah. Lannister-level golden hair coming out of the back of his head. The golden locks coming out. Could easily put together an all-flow team from this region. We've seen really good lettuce. Right. Swung through that one at 90 miles an hour, 0-2. All right, now 0-2. Heifel's got to have the strikeout pitch. He's, he's kind of missed that so far in the start. These Louisiana Tech batters have made him work really hard when you've gotten the two-strike counts. And I mentioned it earlier. Who's going to be able to execute in two-strike counts better? That's going to go a long way to who wins. You call the partner strike three there. And Heifel now with two strikeouts on the evening. Keeps the wolf back in front, one to nothing. All right, here's a look at what's going on in South Bend. Notre Dame, the number 10 national seed. Uh, they put up a football score against UConn today, 26 to three. An absolute rout in the winner's game there. UConn will face Central Michigan in the elimination game tomorrow. So Notre Dame has scored 36 runs in the first two games. And this guy's dad is coaching one of the hottest teams in baseball, JT Jarrett, the son of Link Jarrett, head coach at Notre Dame. And uh, JT has been the mainstay here in the Wolfpack lineup. He's kind of served as that second leadoff guy in the nine spot. I thought it was really funny, too. Before NC State played Notre Dame this year, uh, his dad was interviewed, and he said, look, I I'm proud of the kid, but doesn't mean you don't want to beat him. Right. You're talking about bragging rights around the dinner table. You're talking about uh, not only that, but ACC standings. I mean, those are two of the best teams in the league this year. But I, I'm not sure there's a team in the country that's playing better than Notre Dame has the past two games. Notre Dame has been unconscious. Nico Cavadas has been unreal. And maybe those players, after seeing on, on selection day, they were not a top eight national seed, said, all right. Well, let's go show you why we should have been. Mm -hmm. 
Austin Murr in the top of the order on deck. NC State took the lead back in the first inning. It's an RBI double from Johnny Butler. 1-2. This one chopped towards third. Foul. Back so far from Jarrett. Ryan Jennings was absolutely cruising last inning. Tiring the side, one, two, three. Really settled in. That's low and away. Good eye by JT Jarrett. Coach Avent says that he reminds him of Bucky Dent and that type of player. It's really pesky, tough to get out. Oh, and a called strike three on the outside corner to Jarrett. Well, he missed this spot. Corona wanted this inside, but it's outside, and JT Jarrett gets rung up. See where Corona set up once it buried in, and uh, you don't often get that call. Now, our camera is at an angle. Our camera is kind of to the left center field side, so it's going to make it look a little wider. But uh, you don't usually get that call when you miss a spot by that much. A one to Austin Murr, who started off our game with a double, came around to score the only run for the Wolfpack. Squares to bunt, pops it foul, 0 and 2. You mentioned, Roddy, earlier, you can kind of feel the tension in this ballpark because both these teams know how important it is to start 2-0 in a regional. You are just in the driver's seat if you can do that. You absolutely are, and you know, both of these teams, as you get a look at NC State and the offensive production that they've had, six doubles so far in this regional. That's in addition to five home runs that they hit yesterday, just by the way, in case you... Uh, are keeping tallies of extra base hits at home. Here comes Jennings with a 2 2. And slapped out of play. Murr transferred in from Des Moines Area Community College following two seasons there. He was tapped as an All-American in 2019. And he grounds one back up the middle into center field. So a double and a single for Austin Murr here so far through his first two at-bats. Ravi, this is breaking news time. Uh, NC State is capable of hitting something other than an extra base hit. Their first single of the regionals. It's a good piece of hitting by Austin Murray. You gotta love the way he approaches his at-bats, particularly with two strikes. Not trying to do too much. That double in the first inning was a two-strike pitch that he just lines in the left center field. That time does the same thing. Flips the head of the bat, gets a ground ball up the middle for a single. Tyler McDonough now. And he takes the ball high, flying out to center field in his first at-bat. Was a consensus freshman All-American back in 2019. Led the team in all freshmen in the conference with 80 hits. Not easy to come in and start all 60 games as a team center fielder. And then not make a single error as well. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive. Shows you how good he's been out there for them. Usually, you know, you're out in the outfield. It's, I wouldn't say easy, but common to see guys not make errors in fielding balls. But, but the throwing errors, that's what gets you in trouble. Yeah. And Tyler McDonough has been able to avoid that. Only well, hitting 15 bombs this year. Right 
Johnny Butler on deck that had the double that drove in Austin Murr in his first at bat. Ryan Jennings with the 1-1, one -one, just below the knees. Crowd doesn't love it here. Two balls and a strike. It's one of those that, as a pitcher, you're begging to get, and as a spectator, apparently, you are begging to get that strike because if you are, it changes the dynamic of the game if you can get that just below the knee. And the 2 1. And this one hit the other way into left field. Up to second goes Murr. So back to back singles here for the Wolfpack. Top this lineup getting something going again. McDonough actually got this off the end of the bat. It's a good inside out swing. Tell that approach he's looking to go the other way. Hands inside the baseball, and even though it doesn't hit it particularly well, it gets through the six hole over there on the left side. It brings up Johnny Butler. Four hits so far in this game through two and a third innings for NC State. Now Johnny Butler, first and second one out. And Corona lost it. That looked a little bit awkward there. Yeah, it looks like it got crossed up a little bit, yeah. It's a strange way he snapped at that and gonna have a mound visit to get everybody on the same page. Watch Corona's reaction. Looks like he's expecting off speed, gets the fastball. He's gonna take fortunate that didn't cost him. Dangerous Butler at the plate. Mike Silva, the pitching coach, out to talk to Ryan Jennings. This could be as much about, as much about calming him down as it is about strategy, although the way he was looking, it's a little bit more strategy. Check out the uh, young man in yeah, the middle next to his sister waving the pom-poms. <laughs> Look, man, I'm with you. It's a late first pitch. My man is tired. Yeah. Our man is knocked out. <laughs> He's done. Done. He's being a trooper, though. Mom being a trooper as well, making sure that he, <laughs> young man's nice and comfortable as he sleeps through this, uh, this late first pitch. One zero is a called strike. Two hour rain delay. First pitch was delayed. Was supposed to be around seven o'clock Eastern time. Ended up being nine o six Eastern time. Jennings will look back to second and will step off the mound. NC State top of the order. Really, really good. Four for five. One through three hitters tonight with two doubles. Up on the dirt. Taken off to third is Murr. The throw down there. And he may have slid past the bag a little bit. He gets called out. You can immediately see Mike Silva over at third base making the motion to review this, and they are going to. NC State is challenging. Let's see if we can get a good look. I think they got a pretty good. We may get our first, our first play that's overturned in this one, partner, because I, I think the hand of of Murr gets in ahead of the tag, even though the throw beats him, the tag from Wells got Murr kind of high up. And on the bag, that tag doesn't happen until the shoulder. I, I, I think this is gonna be overturned. It looks pretty clear 
And remember, as we mentioned earlier, in these coaches' challenges, if you win, you get to keep the challenge. If you lose it, you lose it, and you only get two. Yeah, the, the only reason I said he may have come off the bag is the, the third base umpire there didn't make the out call until really late. And it, it didn't look to me, I don't know if you saw differently, it didn't look to me like he ever lost contact with the bag. Let's let's take a look at that. And if the tag stays on him the whole time. Because the out call is not made here. It's made here. He never loses contact with the bag either. Not I'm from what you, I yeah. saw, unless you saw something different. I mean, I would expect this to be overturned for NC State. So coach can challenge any of the 12 types of reviewable plays. Only some of those can be initiated by the umpires, except for in the last two innings. In the last two innings, anything can be umpire initiated. So the call in the field is, is that Murr was out. And again, you need conclusive evidence to overturn a call. I mean, I, I would I would make the argument that what we've seen is, is pretty indisputable when you're talking about the evidence needed. I, I think it's very clear that Murr slides in ahead of the tag, keeps contact with the bag the entire time, making him safe. Hands on the bag, there's the tag, never loses contact, Wells slaps the tag back down. So wow. the call's going to stand on the field. I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what was what was disputable about that. From what we saw, it was very indisputable that that call was incorrect. That that Austin Murr was safe at third base. Uh, apparently, the umpiring crew did not agree with us. They are in contact with the uh, the command center in Pittsburgh, but uh, from our vantage points, uh, I thought there was plenty of evidence and plenty of indisputable evidence to overturn that call. NC State uh, on the wrong end of that one. Now each coach only has one more challenge left. So now two outs. McDonough did move up to second base on the throw down to third. And a call strike too. You know, I think if anything, the case for the out call was probably better made on the tag before he slid past the base. Uh, I completely agree. I, I completely agree. And it was very clear when the tag was made on the shoulder when the hand was on the bag. Never lost contact. I don't. I don't understand it. But regardless, three, two, and two outs. This one rolled over towards first. Garcia. Not in time. Butler beats it out. And as much as you'd like to, if you're Lane Burroughs, I don't think you can challenge this. Ooh. Bang, bang, play. I mean, if you lose this challenge, you, you can't challenge for the rest of the game. You are done with your challenges. So I think Lane Burroughs just has to live with this. Unless we are, we are going to get another review. Yeah. What's your thoughts on, on trying to go with the review here early in this game? You, it's tough. I mean, it, it, it is it is certainly tough. Tyler McDonough actually scored from second base on the play, too, so it would take a run off the board. But this is bang, bang. I mean, if the last play wasn't overturned, I don't know how you can overturn that one. At least from that angle. So, on well, the first day, we didn't have any. And now, we've had a couple early on in this game. So, 
watch yeah. at second base, Tyler McDonough just continuing to motor around and scores from second base on the play. So this would, if if this stands and it and Johnny Butler is safe, NC State's going to get a run out of a ground ball to the first baseman. Yeah, just like everyone, once they saw the safe call, were so concerned with getting throwing the hands up to make the headset gesture that they forgot about Tyler McDonough. And it just kept on playing. Call does stand. asking for clarification or an explanation but either way I believe that that's going to mean NC, or excuse me Louisiana Tech and Lane Burroughs cannot challenge for the rest of this game they have lost two challenges so far so that would be a big storyline going forward if we get any more of these bang bang plays in this game Louisiana Tech is going to be powerless to have them reviewed until the last two innings and even then they'll have to be initiated by this uh, umpire crew so tie goes to the runner there for Johnny Butler. Here's Terrell Tatum in what has been a long top of the third inning. Tatum 0 for 1 with a ground out back in the first inning. He's got Butler on first, who does have a lot of speed. 14 stolen bases on the year for him. He's only been caught once. And a curveball missing high. Three balls, no strikes to Tatum. It's one for two yesterday with a double score to run. Can tell from the body language of Ryan Jennings frustrated with these calls. He's got to settle down. NC State always capable of an explosion. So the next pitch from Jennings will be his 60th pitch of the game through two and two thirds innings. A four pitch walk, the first of the game. But you've got a dangerous hitter in Jose Torres at the plate, a guy who's had seven home runs on the season. Off the end of the bat, foul. We saw Torres hit a home run yesterday. It was two for three. Had a nice little bat flip to go along with that home run. What was his seventh of the year? Butler on second, Tatum on first, two outs, top of the third. And a ground ball foul at the third baseline. Some home run that Jose Torres hit yesterday. No doubter to left field. A little bat flip. He's excited. He's down 0-2 here. A couple of good breaking balls to start this at bat. Jennings trying to get out of this inning. O2. Curveball. That was hanging just a little bit. Torres fooled just enough. See Torres recognized it. 
initially had that slight buckle but recognized it couldn't hold it quite long enough to get that in fair territory. Oh, two again. Up in the zone, lifted out to right field. Matulia's got a beat on it, and he makes the catch. So NC State strands two, but they tack on another run. They lead two to nothing. The NCAA regionals coverage for all 16 sites continues tomorrow on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Some fans up in what are, looks like apartment complexes out there. We got fans packing the Love Shack. Again, the first time that a regional has been hosted by Louisiana Tech in program history, and their fans are loving it. However, the host team is currently down two to nothing in the winner's game to NC State. There's a look at that complex out there. That is back to the brim. Alex Ray swings at the first pitch and fouls it back out of play. Ray, the shortstop for this team from Florida. Committed to FAU out of high school. Played a season there, then transferred to Tallahassee Community College for his sophomore year before arriving to Ruston for the 2020 season. Excellent defensive shortstop who's that has not been the most feared in this lineup, but has certainly contributed. I was going to ask you, that was a long inning for Sam Highfield to be sitting, waiting in the dugout, but it seems like he is right back to pumping strikes down. Got Alex Ray down 0-2. And got him a chase there. A strikeout for Highfield, that's his third. did exactly what you should do at the bottom of the lineup, came right after him and gets him to swing at that pitch down in the zone, excuse me, out of the zone in the dirt. And that is what Louisiana Tech has been really good at so far. But the past two batters, Matulia and Ray, Eiffel's gotten him to chase a little bit. A bit of a slow start for this Louisiana Tech offense that scored 18 runs yesterday against Ryder. Through two innings, they had five runs. Here, they only have one hit. Through two and a third. Second time through the lineup, the top part of this order is so good. They're such good fastball hitters. You saw there, Heifel starting off young with breaking ball. Taylor Young, the Division I leader in runs over Quincy Hamlin of Wright State. 80 runs on the year for T.Y. Wright State done for the season now. Yeah. After just a heartbreaker last night to Tennessee. Up three runs in the ninth inning. Tennessee hits a grand slam and then they get duped the next day and lose. So Wright State done. So Taylor Young has an opportunity to extend that lead. All, he, all Louisiana Tech really has to do now is play longer than Arizona, and he'll lead the league in, uh, in runs scored, lead the country. This one hit well out to right center field. Long run for McDonough, the diving play, and it falls out of his glove. Young sliding into second base, and he's there safely with a one-out double. This would have been some play by Tyler McDonough in center field. He covered a lot of ground to get to this ball because this ball's hammered by Taylor Young. McDonough dives oh. and it just hits off the edge of the glove. Man, wasn't quite able to get the pocket down to it. Turns into a double for Louisiana Tech. Wow, that would have been the play of the regional. We've seen some really good plays so far. Oh, without a doubt. So 
One out double here, Louisiana Tech. Brings up Hunter Wells. And he swings to the first pitch, grounds it to second. Jared is there, and throw to first. Young up to third. Hunter Wells aggressive on a first pitch fastball, but pulled over on it a little bit. By the just way, we just talked about that. Go ahead, Roddy. I was going to say, you just get the feeling that there's just going to be so many of these situations tonight, you know? Yeah. You're getting out, then you get a double. There's going to be those high-pressure pitches coming up after that. Parker Bates takes a first pitch in the inside corner for a called strike. And I think NC State knows that two runs is not going to be enough, probably, against this Louisiana Tech team. And similarly, Louisiana Tech doesn't really appear to be all that worried. Yeah, I think Louisiana Tech's pretty confident that, uh, that at some point tonight they can put up a couple of runs. And when you look at the pitch counts of these two pitchers, we are going to see some bullpens today. And, and both of these bullpens, because of the nature of the wins yesterday, both of these bullpens are fresh. But we're going to see some different arms. This one is hit well. Out to right center field. Going to stay in the park, though. And McDonough records the out. So Young stranded on third. Still no runs for the Bulldogs. NC State up two. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. I we see some of the Wolfpack faithful making the trip down to Ruston, Louisiana to watch their team and pretty happy with what they've seen so far. 2-0 lead over the host team, Louisiana Tech. As we head to the top of the fourth inning, Roddy Jones, Sam Ravage on hand with you here. Ryan Jennings continues on the mound, three innings so far. Jennings really? threw 31 pitches in yeah. that third inning, though. And as he responds from a mentality standpoint, attacking, as you look at uh, Luca Tresh, who's one of the top ACC draft prospects. There's certainly a couple players that are going to hear their names called in the draft this year, and Tresh, one of those. Had some really big cleats to fill, taking in the role of Patrick Bailey, who was drafted by the Giants last year in the shortened draft. And uh, he's filled those quite nicely. I thought it was kind of interesting that the Giants drafted Patrick Bailey after drafting Joey Bart. Right. But uh, it's kind of a lot of riches behind the plate for the Giants organization now. Yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those situations. I, I thought it was one of those situations where you're either going to end up with uh, it hitting on, on either Bart or Bailey, or maybe you hit on both and you've got an excellent trade piece yeah. down the line that you can stock up some draft picks or prospects with. Trash fly ball to center field. And Bates under it for out number one. Coming to play the right fielder, Devontae Brown. There's Devontae Brown. You've seen quite a bit of trash this year. What, what makes him such an intriguing draft prospect? Well, I think you start with his ability behind the plate, what he's able to do with the glove. But uh, the, the raw power, and early in the season, was hitting for a lot of average as well. But the power is intriguing. I mean, that is uh, certainly one of the better tools that he has and just overall his ability to manage the staff behind the plate. Talk about power. Devontae Brown has some of that and then some. Called strike two there. The two home runs yesterday was 
more of a role player off the bench his freshman and sophomore years. Last year started all 17 games before the season was shut down due to COVID. And now an everyday guy. So far through three and a third, all the damage has been done by the top part of this NC State order. Outside of the top three batters, no one has received a hit. Line drive, is that a fair ball? It is. Devontae Brown up the third base line, coast into second base. Line drive down the line, just inside the line. A third base umpire, Mike Sadowski, had a great view of it. Devontae Brown knew it. And another double in this game. Tenth double on the season for Devontae Brown. And now Vojta Menchik in the eighth spot. Fights that one to first. Right there is Garcia. Great positioning. And that keeps Brown on second. It's the best ball that we've seen come off the bat of Vojta Menchik so far in this regional. Inside the ball, lines that to first base, but Garcia, Johnny on the spot, standing in the perfect place, and NC State's going to do damage here in the fourth. JT Jarrett's going to have to get it going. Number nine batter on this Wolfpack team. He takes one low, has served as kind of that second leadoff guy. Had a hit in all four games played the ACC tournament. Line to left field, that's a base hit. Devontae Brown coming around to score, and he will. NC State takes a 3-0 lead in the fourth. Well, a guy that Elliot Avent described as scrappy, hard-nosed, a fighter comes through for NC State with the line drive. Cole McConnell does a nice job of cutting that off and taking a, the only angle that gave him a chance. But there was never much of a chance of getting Devontae Brown at second base, and NC State able to take advantage of the one-out double. I what Elliot Avent is uh, uh, talking You know what I think? It, Austin Murr was having some trouble getting the weight off the bat. <laughs> you saw him when we, we kind of went to him when he was in the on-deck circle, and the donut was stuck on the bat, and they were having trouble getting it off. How many members of the Wolfpack does it take to remove a donut? <laughs> Sounds like one of those riddles. <laughs> He's laughing. Certainly more than one because you've got Jose Torres in there. <laughs> you, got, you know what this reminds me of? You know, like everyone tries to open the pickle jar and no one can open it. Everyone says, pass it to me, I'll open oh, yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a shot. <laughs> well, I'm glad it eventually happened, but look at all the pine tar on the bat of, of Austin Murray. That's probably what had the donut stuck. He's got the pine. All right, welcome back, everyone. We apologize for the technical difficulties, but we are live here in Ruston, Louisiana. J.C. Love Field, the Love Shack. Last out of the top of the fourth, fly ball off the bat of Murta Center Field. So NC State did tack on another run in the third. 
or the fourth, excuse me, and they lead three to nothing. And up in the zone to McConnell, one and two. And you were just talking about it, Roddy, how Sam Highfill has worked his way, weaved his way in and out of this very difficult lineup. Yeah, it's almost like navigating a minefield, but he's been able to do it. A lot of it off the backs of that fastball. He's only struck out three, but he's kept the hitters off balance enough. Outside of a Taylor Young double, a Hunter Wells double, and a walk to Parker Bates. He's not allowed any other base runners, and he's really settled into this game well. So for Louisiana Tech, just two hits so far in this game. A any surprise of the lack of offense for Louisiana Tech after putting up 18 yesterday on 14 hits? Uh, I mean, maybe a little bit, uh, but Sam Heifel's pitching well. And, and, and we knew that it was going to be a bit of a challenge against Sam Heifel. It wasn't going to be like yesterday. Another ground ball over to first. And another toss to Heifel. Look, this NC State team, look at the shift, is always aggressive with their shifts, but Louisiana Tech just has to keep chopping wood. And this is a, a potent offense. This is an offense that's that got a flair for the dramatic, is used to playing from behind, and is not going to panic with as experienced as they are. And the comeback kings in the Conference USA Championship uh, tournament. Manny Garcia, a couple of good plays defensively so far in this one. 0 for 1 at the plate. Fly ball back in the second. In our call with Coach Avent, uh, talking kind of how he was going to line up his pitching staff today and the rest of the regional after getting the start that they got from Reed Johnston. He acknowledged that they do have arms down there in the bullpen, but they really need good starts from their starters. It's not exactly the deepest bullpen in the country. No, and, and he admitted that. He said, look, a lot of what we've done has been Reed Johnson, Sam Heifel, Evan Justice. High fly ball to left. And the side retired in order by Heifel here. We are through four. We'll pack up three to nothing. Welcome everyone to Omaha, Nebraska. That one is caught. Making the catch. This one's going to end up on Sports Center. Anchored down Vanderbilt on top of the college baseball world again. 286 teams started out with a dream of going to Omaha. And whoever makes it out of this regional will be up against the Fayetteville regional winner, Arkansas, the number one national seed, and obviously the host there. And they are up three to nothing over Nebraska in that winner's game. NJIT gave them a run for their money. They had to bring in Kevin Copps in the fourth inning yesterday, the player of the year in college baseball this year. So I, I think Nebraska is probably hopeful uh, that they could get a Arkansas team that had a depleted bullpen, but they trail three to nothing now. That Arkansas team is so complete and so deep, and yeah, they, they went deep into their bullpen yesterday, but if anybody can survive that, it's Arkansas with the arms that they've got. McDonough swings through one there from Jennings. NC State Wolfpack, one through three. Five for seven today, two doubles, three singles, two RBI, and two runs. So top of this order has been lethal. They were lethal yesterday, they're lethal today. It's really as good a one through four as you're likely to see. Murr, McDonough, Butler, Tatum, all four. Some sort of all ACC accolades. Murray McDonough, second team. Butler Tatum, first team. Oh, 
what a change for Louisiana Tech. And you knew it was going to be a tougher slog, but after four innings last night, they had a 7-0 lead over Ryder. Here they trail 3 to nothing, and are in a dogfight. 3-2. This one lifted out to right field. Hooking foul. Just barely foul. Tyler McDonough was all over that off-speed pitch. Just ahead of it. All right, Roddy, we, we, we know that Jennings has gone the distance a couple of times this year. Uh, the question becomes, you're in the top of the fifth and your team trailing by three. How, how long do you stick with Ryan Jennings? Uh, as long as you feel like he's got control of the game and he can keep his pitch count. Look, with, with 84 pitches, I mean, you're certainly keeping an eye on that, but... Called strike three at the knees to McDonough. Third of the night for Ryan Jennings. Excellent pitch right at the knees. And Tyler McDonough a little surprised. Might have been a little lower than, uh, than you would normally get for a strike, but too close to take on two strikes. Johnny Butler foul tips the first pitch. Johnny Butler starting to heat back up. He's 0 for 2 at the plate in the first game. Before that, 3 for 15 in the ACC tournament. But 2 for 2 here today. Bobble that's short, but a strong throw from Alex Ray. Over to first, two gone. All right, keep in mind, squeeze play is your place to go for multi-game coverage scores and highlights. Check out squeeze play available on the ESPN app throughout college baseball regionals. Chris Budden, Matt Schick, and the legend Mike Rooney are back in studio, and they got you covered all weekend long. They've been doing a great job. Long days for them. I have not seen Mike Rooney leave the set yet. Like, I feel like he's been there all day, both days, putting in the work. Always with great insights, a lot of fun to watch these play. With, with this many games going on, you almost have to have it up to keep track of what's going on. This is like a vacation, by the way, for Mike Rooney. I mean, he, he lives for this, so <laughs> That's true. he's having a ball there. Two zero on the way to Terrell Tatum. And a called strike. Tatum drops the hammer and fouls it out of play. Two and two. Don't let this frame fool you at six foot 167 out of Collierville, Tennessee. Out 11 homers on the year. And he could easily. Leave a ballpark. Generates incredible bat speed with that frame. Quick hands, fast twitch muscles. Able to whip the head of the bat through and generate that power. Rips this one over. The leaping Taylor Young and into right field. That ball was climbing, trying for second. The throw is a good one, and he's out. Tatum saying, no way. <laughs> the throw definitely beat him, was being aggressive, and Elliott Avon only has one more of those coaches' challenges, having lost his first. They are going to go ahead and have the uh, umpires take a look at this one. Both coaches being aggressive with the challenges. I love it. And that was going to be my question, too, because, you know, it was two outs, so you get Tatum on second with two outs, but yeah, that ball was climbing once it got to Taylor Young. He climbed the ladder, almost had it. Throw was a good one. It's a great job of Matulia getting to it, cutting it off before it gets to the wall. And it looked like Ray got 
Tatum on the hand from those two looks, and obviously we may have some others, but from those couple of looks, I don't know how you can overturn this. Maybe this one will tell us. This is probably going to be one of the better looks. Mm. Blocking the bag a little bit there. That was Ray. I just, you, you, you can't see when the yeah. tag is made there. You're having to look through the umpire's legs, and, and you're looking for indisputable video evidence. And I think there's, whichever way you think this goes, I think there's plenty of room for dispute. Tatum certainly thought it, thought that he was safe. He immediately went to his head, telling him to challenge. I just don't know how you overturn this one. out at second. You need conclusive evidence to overturn a call. Saw the photographer just, in there showing showing the screen on her camera. Maybe she's helping out too with this uh, with this challenge. We may not have indisputable video evidence, but maybe yeah. there's indisputable photographic <laughs> evidence. See if we can get that film. Well, I guess it's like a memory card now. Love Shack is packed. Pump it up. Ravi, you haven't broken out into the Love Shack song yet, and I'm a little disappointed that hasn't happened so far in this region. I don't think anybody on the ACC network or watching on the ESPN app wants us to do that. All right, well, let's take a look at this once again. Let's watch both hands. Yeah, the call's going to stand on the field. I'm just not sure that there was enough evidence there. Tatum clearly thought he was in, but you need some evidence and clear evidence to prove that. So, nonetheless, it'll be a 1-2-3 inning. Turned in. The throw was a great one by Matulia. NC State still on top, 3-0. Back in Ruston, Louisiana. The host team, Louisiana Tech, their fans not really acting like they're down 3 nothing. They know what kind of offense their Bulldogs have, albeit just two hits through this one. And NC State leading 3 to nothing as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning here at the Love Shack. And fans pumping it up all over this ballpark. I don't know who's DJ in this, but I'm kind of feeling it too. I'm I'm in here dancing as well. I'm, I feel the energy of Club Love Shack all the way here in Atlanta. So it'll be seven, eight, nine for Louisiana Tech here trying to get some offense against Sam Highfield, who has been really good, has worked around some trouble, but has only allowed two hits. And both those were doubles. He's striking out three, walked one. And you, you wonder, you got a big momentum play at the top of the inning with the Matulia gun out of Torres at second base. The review kind of let the energy build in this building. The review goes your way. And this place is absolutely jumping. They are into it. They are fired up, trying to will their team to get some offense. Saw Sam Heifel on that last pitch, though, going a little three quarters. He'll do that yeah. from time to time to change the the release point on these hitters. More over the top there, but yeah, he dropped that arm slot pretty good on pitch prior to that one. Yeah, he doesn't break it out much, and he has it in this game except for the one time, but every once in a while he'll go, he'll go with that three quarter delivery and his crowd's into it. Corona just missed that one, found it straight back, and the count runs full. And George Corona. Corona.
Arizona signs there. Sophomore to Miami, Florida. Two. Check swing, pops it up, foul territory. Highfield is over there, and he makes the catch in foul territory. That's athleticism by Highfield, but a little excuse me swing. George Corona tried to hold up. Really clearly goes, but... Pops it up in foul territory. Frustrating result for uh, George Corona and Louisiana Tech. And that is the 11th official at bat for the three through nine hitters for Louisiana Tech. Eight for 11 so far. Tulia's swing will get out of play down the line. How about this? Great stat from our friend Chris Taylor at Research. NC State pitchers have only allowed one run in 13 and a third innings pitch in the tournament. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. And, and look, it, it's been two guys. It's been Reek Johnston and Sam Highfield. They're two studs who, uh, who have started the games. Johnston going the distance yesterday. Excuse me, going eight yesterday. Chris Villeman also pitched in with one inning of works. Don't want to forget Villeman, who came in throwing gas as well. Tulia struck out in the second. Down 0-2 here. Eiffel deals. That's away. A defensive swing there by Matulia. It was a two-time All-State player at St. Thomas High School in Houston. Comes from an extensive baseball family. Father played baseball at Radford. Brother Mitchell at UTSA. Uncle played at Georgia Tech, Roddy. And the Citadel. Good man. One, two. Oh, grooved it in there and a called strike three. That was 75 miles an hour pumped in for the fourth strikeout tonight. The fastball has done most of the damage, but that time he flips the backdoor breaking ball, and Matulia knew it, catches the outside corner. Excellent pitch from Sam Heifer. Bottom of this Bulldog order continues to struggle. See if Alex Ray can break out of it here. Two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Seven in a row retired by Highfield. This ball lined out to right field. That'll fall for a base hit. Bottom two-thirds of the order gets its first hit off the bat of Alex Ray. And even that one, I mean, if you're Sam Highfield, you are uh, none too upset about that base hit. It's weakly hit off the end of the bat. It just so happens to bloop into shallow right field. It's not like it was a liner up the middle. But Louisiana Tech with an opportunity here. Taylor Young and Hunter Wells have done the majority of the damage here today for the Bulldogs. Top of the order and Taylor Young doubled in his last at bat, made it all the way to third, did not score. Two outs here. Curveball in there for strike one. I feel a pitch number 80 went down to that lower arm slot and nearly hit Taylor Young there. 
He's gone to it twice, and neither one of them looked uh, particularly controlled. Both of them got away from him a little bit when he's dipped that arm slot down. One one. Fastball fouled out of play. Two, lifted out to right. Devontae Brown over and makes the catch on the move. And that's out number three. NC State still in command with a three nothing lead after five. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One here in Ruston, Louisiana. The host team, Louisiana Tech, trailing. NC State here in the winner's game, three to nothing. Winner of this one is cruising into championship day tomorrow. Loser is going to have to face off against Alabama in an elimination game. If you go 2-0 and in a regional, you are in the driver's seat because it is double elimination. So whoever wins that elimination game tomorrow will have to beat you twice. Ryan Jennings today has been fairly good. This NC State offense has not had a big inning. It's just been single runs. Here's a bunt up the third base line. Picked up foul by Hunter Wells. Hunter Wells wisely letting that go foul. But you're exactly right about going 2-0 and in that regional. Gives you such an advantage. Because not only do you have to get beat twice at that point, from whoever comes out of the uh, the early game on Sunday, but you only have to play once on Sunday. That other team has to play twice and then come back and beat you right. again on Monday. It's just such a tough road when you get in the loser's bracket. Torres down 0-2. He is 0-4-2 today. Fly out in the line out. Still batting above 300. There are six players on this team that uh, can really, really put a hurting on the ball. Driving in the outfield. Torres certainly one of those. And he goes down swinging there. This ball just dives out of the zone. Torres chases. NC State generally today has been pretty disciplined at the plate, not chasing out of the zone. But that time, Jennings with the excellent breaking ball gets Torres to chase. This ball fouled at the third baseline by Tresh. Catcher who's also 0-4-2 today. Flied out back in the fourth. Struck out in the second. This game has sort of settled down into a pitcher's duel. You know, we thought we were going to get a, an explosion of offense and early on it kind of looked like we may be going that way but the pitchers have done a good job of continuing to throw their games of, of getting out of some tough situations and it's really settled down into more of a pitcher's duel and NC State has eight hits but only able to get three runs from those eight hits so we were just talking about it when you go 2-0 you got an 81% chance of coming out of it. You know, since the tournament has expanded, 64 teams, you're gonna fly ball to right field. Matuli over, and foul territory makes the catch. Tough play out there. Kind of have to have nerves of steel going over there in the foul territory, but it's a home ballpark. Matulia very familiar with how much room he has over there. And you know what? I, I think that's one of the toughest things when you play on that turf field. Because typically you've got a warning track of, of gravel going around the field. When you hit the warning track, it lets you know. You know yeah, a different feel on your feet. That you've got some room. 
or that you're running out of room. Here, it's just a different color turf. That different color turf doesn't feel any different under your feet. So you don't have that tactile feedback from the field. Right, and you're not looking down to see what color the turf is. You Normally, you're right, looking exactly. up. Right, <laughs> exactly. Maybe you catch it out of the corner of your eye, but it's yeah. not exact. Like, you, you can't quite tell. All right, am I standing on it? Am I just seeing it? This one hit well by Brown out to center field. Bates at the wall makes the catch. So the side retired in order by Jennings here. And he keeps it a three-run deficit for the Bulldogs. For around the clock, multi-game coverage scores and highlights. Check out Squeeze Play available on the ESPN app throughout the college baseball regionals. Still a positive attitude at the Love Shack tonight, despite the home team down three to nothing. Heading to the bottom of the six. Not a whole lot of uh, concerned faces there. I think they know what their team is capable of, right? Yeah, they're having, uh, and plus, they're having too much fun to have concerned faces. I mean, <laughs> right. you got the girl there enacting what's going to happen this inning, what she hopes happen. You got some of the fans out there in front of the, uh, the student housing. Enjoying some burgers, and and they should be excited or looking forward to this half inning. We lead off with two, three, four: Hunter Wells, Parker Bates, Steel Netterville. Dangerous part of the lineup is Sam Heifel's pitch count prompts. Hunter Wells starts it off with a single, and you mentioned it. This is a huge, huge inning for Louisiana Tech with two, three, four up. Hunter Wells did his job there. Hunter Wells four for five yesterday, now two for three on that one. Hold on, let me see if I can get my match straight. It's six for, uh, what, six for eight? Forgot how many he had yesterday. Yeah, six for eight. I was told there would be no match. Yeah, six for eight. Four for, he was four for five yesterday. It's too late to be doing math. I never should have tried. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a monster inning. Sam Heifel has done a nice job. That only the fourth hit given up by the NC State starter. That is 84th pitch. And grounded foul. Yeah, it's also the first leadoff hit for Louisiana Tech here tonight. Half inning key here for Heifel is going to be keep the ball down. We've seen how the ball flies out of this ballpark. Have not had one leave it so far in this one, but the ball can carry out of here. In the hole. And this one lined to center field. McDonough had a beat on it and played it well. As an outfielder, I have been told those are some of the tough ball, toughest balls to judge, correct? Yeah, the, line drive the right thing at that helped. The thing that helped McDonough on that one is he was shaded towards right field, and that ball was hit right up the middle. So he kind of had a little bit of an angle to see it off the bat, so it wasn't directly at him. But he did an excellent job. We're also being told from our uh, crew that's there, the NC State outfit's playing a little more shallow than what we've seen so far in this regional. Some of that may be the size of this ballpark, and they figure they can get to anything over their heads, or else it's going to be out of the ballpark. One popped up, and it'll get out of play. Tougher to judge a, a ball off the bat, a, a metal bat or a wood bat in the outfield? Uh, you know, I don't think either one is, is tougher. It's just what you're more used to. I mean, these guys see the ball off the bat of a, wood, of a metal bat all the time. So the adjustment would be going to wood and judging it off of that. But neither one is more difficult. It's just different, you know. The sound of the yeah. bat, some of the some of the the non-visual things, are much different when uh, when you when you switch up with the bats made of. This ball lined into left field off the bat of Steel Netterville, and up to second will go well. So you got first and second with one out here in the bottom of the sixth.
All right, Louisiana Tech with taking advantage of having the top of that lineup up, the top of this lineup that has been so crucial in so many of their comebacks. I mean, Lane Burroughs told us, look, we have full belief late in games that our lineup can come through with the crucial hit. So we're gonna get a, uh, a mound visit. I believe from Clint Chrysler, the pitching coach, at least that's what it looked like. No, it was just a visit from Luca Tresh, the catcher. NC State bullpen starting to stir a little bit. Cole McConnell at the plate, 0 for 2. Two homers on the year. Lifts this one down the line, left field, tailing foul, and it's going to get out of play. We've seen some more first pitch swings here in this inning for Louisiana Tech. Yeah, not, not surprising. I mean, the top of this lineup has been aggressive. And they get fastballs. They are jumping on them. NC State, you're going to have a round visit. So look at Evan Justice, the excellent reliever that you typically see at the back part of this bullpen. is actually making this visit to the mound. We'll see if it results in Evan Justice coming in or if he's going to let Sam Heifel continue. Kind of by the body language of Heifel, it doesn't appear as if he'll stay in the game, but we'll see. Yeah, it feels like Evan Justice is, is, is going to be turned over to him. And Evan Justice has been fantastic at the back part of this bullpen. All right, so pitching change here. Heifel's day is done, five and a third, five hits, and he leaves with runners on first and second and one out here in the bottom of the six. He'll hand the ball off to Justice there. And he'll throw some warm-up pitches. We've seen some really interesting plays in this game so far. We've seen quite a few challenges already here in the third inning. We saw the throw down to third base, and that call stood. Here's another close one at first. And in the fifth inning, Terrell Tatum thrown out after the base hit to right field. He immediately thought that he was safe, but that call stood. He was out. I didn't catch the uh, the flare with the call from. Uh, I believe that was. Yeah, it was a little emphasis Rittiger, on that. Our, our first base umpire. He, he had a little hop and a skip on that one before he made the call. But getting a look there at Evan Justice, six four lefty, out of Richmond, Virginia, and, and it is not. It's it is not a rare occurrence for him to come in in a situation where he's going to be asked to go multiple innings. You see the stats on him for the year. His last appearance was against Georgia Tech, the conference championship, or excuse me, in the ACC tournament. He went two and two thirds, did not give up a hit or a run, but he appeared in, he's gone multiple innings against Florida State recently, two and a third on uh, in, in a game in that one, and, and in two innings the day after, three innings against Virginia Tech and Wake Forest. So this is a guy that can get stretched out and give you 30, 40, 50 pitches, and then potentially even come back tomorrow. He's done it earlier this year. Has some starts under his belt as well, so Evan Justice is going to look to uh, cool down this Louisiana Tech offense and take control of this game. Comes in in the middle of a count, too. It is 0-1 after Heifel got the foul ball to McConnell, so there did part of the job for him. We'll see if Justice can Take it the rest of the way. First pitch from Justice at 93 miles an hour. Yeah, you see that sort of three-quarter delivery from Justice. He's got an absolute whip of a left arm. 
competitive, good fastball slider changeup. Doesn't often bring out that changeup as a reliever. You know, you're going with your best two pitches. So we'll see mostly fastball slider. 0 oh, 2. Just got a piece of it. Really difficult left on left matchup here with McConnell. First and second, one out, bottom of the six. And he drops the hammer. That is so tough on Cole McConnell. I mean, he just got fastballs at 93 on the inside part of the plate. Has not seen a slider yet. Evan Justice breaks it out and absolutely freezes McConnell. That is so tough on a hitter to have the pitcher switch on you mid-count. Go from seeing a righty to a three-quarter lefty who's whipping it in there in the low 90s and he's got a nasty slider. So two outs now for Manny Garcia. who's flat out twice today, 0 for 2. Yeah, Hunter Wells on second. Steele Netterville is on first. One zero from Justice, just a bit outside. Two balls, no strikes. <laughs> Garcia pops it up over towards first. Austin Murr. Made it interesting, but made the catch. And Louisiana Tech still searching for that first run. NC State on top, three to nothing. Welcome back, it's the left-hander Cade Gibson's turn and pitching in his hometown. I'd imagine that's pretty cool, right? Growing up, I'm sure he, he, he probably dreamed of this, this moment pitching in a regional in front of what I'm sure is having some family at the Love Shack. Oh, absolutely, and Kate Gibson making his 22nd appearance on the year. He's been a starter and a reliever for this team. He's battled injuries, but his fastball is going to sit in the high 80s, and he's got a plus breaking ball, and Lance Burroughs told us when he's got that on, he is tough to hit. He'll need to have it because he's going to face the top part of this NC State lineup. But I, I think it goes to show you, as, as Kate Gibson has been one of the guys to start for Louisiana Tech, Lane Burroughs is focused on today and today only. And if you have to burn one of your starters for the next couple of days, that's okay. The most important thing is winning this game. Yeah, I think there, there's no question that Louisiana Tech knows the kind of bats they got in that dugout and on the field right now. And three runs. They've come back for more than that this year. And Murr rips one to right center field. That's going to get down. Cut off by Matulia. And stopping at third base is going to be JT Jarrett. So Austin Murr won the left on left battle there. Pardon me, introduce you to Austin Murr, sir. Absolutely drilled into right center field. JT Jarrett motoring around. It's a good job of Matulia of cutting that off because if that gets to the wall, Jarrett surely scores from first base, but cutting it off gives you an opportunity to save it here as you get the switch hitter, Tyler McDonough. Second team all ACC selection this year. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. McDonough one for three today, scored a run. Singled back in the third inning, struck out his last at bat.
Big looping curveball popped up. Foul territory. And this one's going to get out of play. NC State once again putting up four doubles in this game. That Murr double just a second ago, the second of the day for him. He's had a nice day today. Good play on the field as well. This one's lined out to left center field, and that's going to get down. JT Jarrett will score easily. Here comes Murr, and he will touch down. And NC State takes a 5-0 lead here in the seventh. Timely hitting has been on NC State's side today, and the top of the lineup comes through again. Kate Gibson gets a rude introduction to this game with Austin Murr and Tyler McDonough back-to-back -back doubles for NC State, and the Wolfpack have extended their lead. How about this? 78% of their hits in this regional have been extra base hits. Nine doubles, five home runs. Talk about a surge of power. They're four for 10 with runners in scoring position tonight. 10 for 27 overall, it's good for 370 average so far in this one. hasn't done anything wrong, just maybe gotten a little too much of the plate. As NC State hitters have taken advantage of it. Jumping all over the lefty reliever. Done a ton of speed with 12 stolen bases and a called strike two. Man, this top of the order is just mashing the ball. They're seeing it like a beach ball tonight. They've been dangerous all season. It's been as good a one through four combination as it was in their league, the ACC. down to third base and Mike Sadowski says that Johnny Butler did not go but you're right you know it's this the top of this lineup has been locked in today and, and I think the biggest thing that you take away from this year NC State fan Johnny Butler getting back with a hot bat that ball got away from Corona and easily taking third base is McDonough That's not insignificant. Now anything that's hit, McDonald will likely score. Louisiana Tech bringing the infield in. Shortstop Alex Ray's about halfway, but you're in at the corners and in at second base from Taylor Young. To do. Lift it out to right. Matsuli uh, under it. Makes the catch, and that'll score a run. McDonough sliding in safely. It's six to nothing, NC State. And a wild pitch comes back to bite Louisiana Tech. That ball in the dirt gets away. McDonough gets the third base, and the sack fly from Johnny Butler scratches across another run. And this Louisiana Tech team has had a flair for the dramatic late in games, but. I don't want this lead to continue to grow, or deficit, excuse me. High chopper back up the middle, 
tough play. Ray throws it away a little bit there. Tatum gets back to first base. Tough play to barehand that one. Yeah, that's all he could do. I mean, that ball was chopped into the ground. And he actually grabs it, but just not able yeah. to get a good enough grip to throw it over to first base. <laughs> and kind of comes out sideways. So meeting on the mound here. Here's just that stat from our friend Chris Taylor again. NC State 1-2-3 hitters combined 7 for 11, 5 RBIs, 4 runs scored, 4 doubles. So that's uh, I'd say that's a pretty good evening so far. New pitcher coming in for Louisiana Tech. We'll step aside for a short pitching break. All right, new pitcher on the mound, Kyle Krieger. And he will come in and try to limit the damage here. Three runs have come across for NC State in the seventh, and they lead six to nothing. Here are the numbers on the year. Three and two record. 27 Ks and 31 and two-thirds innings. The closer for this Louisiana Tech team. See that strikeout to walk ratio, fantastic. He appeared against Old Dominion with one and a third, gave up four hits and one run in that appearance. But he's a guy that's going to sit in the low 90s up to 93. That breaking ball is coming back. And Krieger, a guy that had Tommy John surgery very recently, he's still working his way back from that. I don't know, a few years ago. But that breaking ball, often the last thing to come back when you've got, uh, when you have that, that Tommy John. What kind of message does that send from Lane Burroughs and company putting your closer in in a game you're down six to nothing? Well, I, I think you got to go with your best arms and get out of this inning. So depending on how long Krieger goes, I mean, he's a guy that is used to pitching on back-to-back -back days. He's done it a number of times this year, as you would expect. But I think the message is that this game is important. You, you got to – the key is winning this game. And because you did not have uh, – you, you, you weren't going very deep in the game with Gibson, you save him for a potential start down the line. But the big thing is getting out of this inning and winning this game. Tatum over at first base, 14 stolen bases on the year. He's only been caught twice. Not going here, and Torres take a called strike. Go two, outside. Torres, first team all ACC player this year. Some have Torres as kind of a late first round, early second round type talent, depending on which pub publication you look at. Born in the Dominican Republic, moved to Baltimore when he was young. On two. Her ball fouled out of play. Got off to a bit of a slow start, as did this entire NC State team. Dropped their first three ACC series, were swept in two of them by Georgia Tech and Louisville. 
Started one for eight in ACC play, and boy, have they turned it around. Yeah, they absolutely have. Ground ball first. Randy Garcia will take it himself. Not before NC State tacks on a couple insurance runs. We'll stretch it out. But NC State up 6 nothing. Take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. And it is that man, Sam Highfield, got the start for NC State. And he has worked around what has been a really dangerous offense all year long. He did his job today, set the Wolfpack up fairly nicely. Five and a third, five hits, four Ks. And anytime you can keep this Louisiana Tech offense scoreless, it is worth uh, honoring that. Heifel was efficient, is, is what I would say. Dodged some danger, but only allowed those five hits. And they were mainly scattered. It did not allow a single home run. Elliot Avent, as you see, walking around in the NC State dugout, has to be very pleased with what his starter gave him. Got to Evan Justice. Who's the best reliever, most consistent, best, most trusted reliever for this team coming out of the bullpen. Got to him. Now it'll be his game. His offense has given him a six-run lead. Winner of this one advances to the NCAA Regional Final. Loser will have to take on Alabama tomorrow in an elimination game to get to the final. And once they do that, they'd have to beat the winner of tonight's game twice. Seven, eight, nine for the Bulldogs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. George Corona 0 for 2 today. And again, this is a Bulldog offense that's averaging seven and a half runs a game. They've been held to just five hits today. Yeah, they have, and it's been on the backs of what Sam Heifel's done and now what Evan Justice is doing. When you're a lefty and you're able to whip it into the inside corner for these right-handed hitters, it makes it so tough. And that's exactly what Evan Justice can do with that low 90s fastball. Ball roped foul up the left field line. Again, the winner of this regional will have to face off against the winner of the Fayetteville Regional. Arkansas currently leading Nebraska 5-1 to one in the top of the seventh inning there. Corona gets into this one. Not enough, though. And McDonough out there to make the catch. The ball sounded good coming off the bat. Sure did. Just a little bit under that. Would you say the ball is flying a little bit differently today than it was yesterday? If it's later in the night or anything, with anything you know, there? I don't know. Maybe the humidity, the rain that we got earlier has something to do with the way the ball's traveling. But we really haven't seen that many balls hit to even the warning track or, or, or certainly the wall. We haven't really seen home runs flirted with in this game very much at all. So it's tough to tell. The ball was flying pretty good in the early game. Yeah. Tulia missed on the bun opportunity there. 0-2. Oh, Again, the game started in a two-hour rain delay. Supposed to start at 7 Eastern time. Ended up starting a little bit past 9 Eastern time. One of our uh, our young fan that we caught earlier sleeping in his mom's lap. I wonder if he's been able to continue his slumber. Past a lot of people's bedtimes when that thing starts. So yeah. Although local time, it was an 8 p.m. first pitch, 8.06 first pitch, so. O2 to Batulia. 
And swung right through a fastball from Justice. Second K tonight for Evan. Number three, the shortstop, Alex Ray. Up and out is where that fastball was from the lefty. Oh, oh there he's he awake. Is. Hey, our guy. Hey, the mom had to bribe him with some ice cream, looks like, though. <laughs> get get the right, sugar some, in have there. This. Right, exactly. <laughs> Cheer for your team. Our man was knocked out earlier today. I don't blame him. You know, rain could put you to sleep. And uh, there's some pretty heavy rain there in Ruston earlier. But he's living the life right now, man. I'm proud of that youngster. You know what? He took a power nap. He laid down. Yeah. Took a power nap, now he's back up and getting rewarded because of it. Fly ball out to right field. Devontae Brown under it. And a 1-2-3 inning turned in by Evan Justice. The tires aside in order. Our guy is ready to go late into the evening in Ruston. 6 nothing NC State. Welcome back. Top of this order for the Wolfpack have been seeing the ball real well tonight, Roddy. Yeah, they've been absolutely phenomenal. When you talk about Austin Murr, who's got three hits on the day, Tyler McDonough with a couple of hits, including a double, Johnny Butler as well with a couple of hits. One through four hitters are nine for 14 for NC State, have nine of the 11 hits, whereas on the other side, Louisiana Tech only five hits on the day, and when runners in scoring position have not found the hit to get a, a run across quite yet, as uh, we've got a new pitcher. New pitcher on the mound, Cade Hodges, seventh appearance on the year, has done well in those appearances. Seven K, seven in the third, two, four, five, ERA. Yeah, but only one appearance from March 9th until now. That appearance came on May 29th against Southern Miss. Bounding ball into the outfield there. First hit of the day for Luca Tresh. I'll bring up Devontae Brown. You know, Rowdy, I, the, the recent success for NC State has been great. The story of the season, though, again, goes back to the beginning, and the way that they started was just really slow. When you look at this team big picture and the way they finished the regular season in the ACC, flip things around, what sticks out to you the most? Well, this was a team that early on uh, just wasn't playing together. You know, it was sort of disjointed. They... Had a lot of guys out for COVID reasons in the preseason. Their first series got canceled due to COVID. And so they had to really jump. They had one non-conference game before jumping in against Georgia Tech and to open up ACC play. Last 29 games, though, look at what they've done offensively. So I just think it took them a little bit to be able to get going. And they kind of were thrown in the deep end with Georgia Tech, a Louisville team that was playing really well, and, and Miami at the beginning of ACC play. Back-to-back -back singles to start off the eighth inning here for Luca Trash and Devontae Brown off the new pitcher, Cade Hodges. Looking to add some more insurance runs. And look, when we, when we talked to Elliot Avins uh, about his team and how they were playing early in the season, he kind of told us that, that he didn't think they were playing that poorly. You know, they, they just kind of got away from a little bit against Georgia Tech. He thought that they played pretty well against Miami. Had two hard luck losses, two two-run losses on Saturday and Sunday. And then against Louisville, they were really starting to put stuff together and things just didn't go their way, as he said. But... And the rivalry series against North Carolina ended up sweeping that, and it's been uh, on and popping from there. Yeah, and I think he said, look, we just weren't really ready. Like, we weren't ready to start the year. For, for whatever reasons those may be, just not enough non-conference games. It was an odd year all around college baseball to start. But, yeah, he just said his team just wasn't ready. And, you know, after starting 1-8, and eight, they got ready. And... Turn things around real quick. 
and, and I, I think it's I think that that is twofold. You know, they, they weren't ready, and they got thrown up against one of the best teams in the ACC in Georgia Tech, and then one of the best teams in the ACC again in Miami, and then after a series was canceled against Duke, they had to play Louisville, who, when Louisville was good this year, they were as good as anybody in that league. They were just incredibly inconsistent. But the big thing is they started to play well down the stretch, and if it weren't for the, the toward pace that Notre Dame set the entire season, very well could have won the Atlantic division, and, and honestly, where it was a couple runs away in the ACC championship game, yeah. potentially hosting. Hensick trying to bunt the runners over here, add on some more runs. And he's down 0-2 now. Elliot Avent frustrated at Voida Menchik's inability to get the bunt down. Seems swinging away here now that it's an 0-2 count. Over three today for Menchik. Checks his swing and a called strike either way. That's one of the worst walks in baseball. When you uh, have the bunt sign, you miss two bunts and then you strike out. You got to go back to the dugout and you just try and avoid the glare of your manager. That mm. glare right there. Yeah, that's cool. Had a manager in travel ball that could bore a hole through you with his <laughs> stare. And any time you missed a bunt, you got it. And it'd last like a half inning. I'd feel it in center field, like, is he still staring at me? Is he still mad? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer was yes. That man has been doing it for a long, long time. A wealth of knowledge, 25 years in Raleigh. Called strike to JT Jarrett there. I mean, just talk about the job that he's done. This is the 32nd NCAA appearance for this team, but the Wolfpack have made the NCAA tournament 10 of the last 11 years. And the consistency with which he runs this program is second to none. You are absolutely correct. They've been as consistent as any program in the ACC, certainly, and even in the country. I mean, this is a team that hosted a regional as recently as 2018, hosted in 2016, 2013, 2012, made it to the College World Series in 2013. It's also the last time they made it to a Super Regional, so NC State looking to do something that has not been done for this team in a while. This ball hit hard, caught on a short hop by Ray. He'll go to third with it. Trash had to hold up just in case he caught on the fly. Nice play there by the shortstop. That's tough. Trash was in a no-win situation. You got to pause in case, as you said, he catches it on the fly. But Ray does glove it. An excellent play to get the lead runner. Well, for a second, they may be able to, to double yeah. up Devontae Brown, but it looked like Brown was a little more aggressive. Brings up the top of the order. And this man has been seeing it awfully well. Three for four. Pair of doubles. It's a big swing from Austin Murr. Saw with the, the up and down the lineup, the top of the order has done a ton of damage tonight. Ground ball through the right side. And coming in to score, sliding in head first, Devontae Brown adding to this lead. And nobody can get Austin Murr out today. Only Austin Murr can get Austin Murr out, it seems like. They had the shift on Taylor Young playing on the grass and was still able to get it through. And George Corona was a little frustrated that that ball was cut off. Couldn't quite tell if Matulia had it online, but I think Corona wanted that thing to come through to see if he could have a shot at Devontae Brown at the plate. But Austin Murr 
having an excellent regional. He has set the table well, as has this entire top of the order. Tyler McDonough now. And he takes a pitch up in the zone. The thing that's impressed me about NC State today is it's been different than it was yesterday. Yesterday it was yep. powered by the extra base hits, the home runs. And today they've, they've certainly had their fair share of extra base hits. But they've been able to scratch out singles as well. And 14 hits now for NC State to get those seven runs and really take control of this game. And now the question is, if you're Elliot Avent, Evan Justice is on the mound for you, do you think about going with someone else? Ball gets away from Corona, and another run will come in to score in JT Jarrett. And this game is blown wide open here in the top of the eighth. NC State on top, eight to nothing. We'll see what Elliot Avent decides to do, but You've got an eight-run lead. I would strongly consider it and probably go ahead and, and pull Evan Justice. I mean, I think when you're back out in the field, you're sending out somebody else to save that arm that you may need tomorrow to send you to a Super Regional if this thing continues the way it's going. It's interesting too and again the winner of this regional whoever comes out of it will go up against the winner of the Fayetteville regional Let, let's play hypothetical here Roddy let's just say for argument's sake NC State comes out of this regional and they end up facing Arkansas this is a, a team that you could make the argument matches up because that they've been so hot at the plate recently to at least make it interesting against an Arkansas team, no? Uh, oh, absolutely. And I think the format being a two out of three in a Super Regional really benefits NC State because of their lack of pitching depth. Eight to nothing, NC State adding a couple insurance here. Right to the bottom. Welcome back. The NCAA Regionals coverage for all 16 sites continues tomorrow on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. As the rally train rolls past in Ruston, Louisiana. His fans have been with this team all year long, and we're sticking with them tonight, down eight runs. It's amazing that the, uh, that the train rolls in at the perfect time for a rally. <laughs> on its way to its final destination. But look, this is a, a team that believes in its ability to come back, and, and especially when they have the top of the lineup up with Young, Wells, and Bates. And I mentioned Elliot Avent might want to consider having another pitcher other than Evan Justice come into the game to try and save him, but I completely understand the decision to leave Justice in to deal with the top of this lineup that is always dangerous. Right, doesn't that show you how much respect Elliot Avent has for this top of the order? Yeah, yeah, it absolutely does. And, and I think, too, some of it is Evan Justice is used to, to going extended innings on back-to-back -back yeah. days. I mean, only a few weeks ago against Florida State, threw 30 pitches in one game, and then the next day turned around and threw 40. So a very durable reliever, so that opportunity is still open. But you got to win this game. I mean, you got to get to tomorrow, that being the most important thing. Taylor Young, leadoff man, one for three, double back in the third. 2-2 two -two from Evan Justice. Line back up the middle, that's a base hit to start it off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. 
It's a long way to go, but it's a good start. It certainly is. And we've sort of mentioned this team's ability to come back. Look at Hunter Wells, four for five last night, two home runs and two doubles. 94 hits this season, a new Louisiana Tech record. He broke the old record that was held by him. How about that? A picture with TJ Soto, the guy whose RBI record <laughs> in a game, nine RBIs he tied, the guy whose overall hits record he broke. Awesome moment. Really cool picture. And he's had another good night tonight, too. Just the home runs, uh, not there, but still two for three. Had the double in the first, single in the sixth. And, and, and this is what Louisiana Tech did just in the Conference USA tournament. And in their first game against Southern Miss, which was an elimination game, if they lost that, they are done. They were down eight to nothing going into the bottom of the fifth, came back to win that game in walk-off fashion. Southern Miss, game two, they're down five to two going into the bottom of the ninth. They end up winning that one six to five. And in the Conference USA Championship game, against Old Dominion. They were down one in the bottom of the ninth, ended up taking that one to extras. This is a team that is used to coming back late in games. Oh, 2 Got him. A rare strikeout for Hunter Wells. It's the slider that just gets Hunter Wells swinging. It was a beautiful pitch. That thing, his back foot absolutely dies out of the strike zone and it gets well swinging. You said it, man. I, I didn't think that was a possibility the way Hunter Wells was hitting this weekend. Parker Bates fouls one off. Still got this pitch sequence to Hunter Wells. First pitch fastball on the outside, you get the breaking ball and then breaking ball, a couple of sliders back to back. Got him to chase the first one, so you go a little bit lower with the second one, all set up by that fastball on the outside corner to lead it off. A one to Bates. You know what's interesting too about Evan Justice? He doesn't exactly like jump off the rubber, but I mean, he really pushes off of it. He's yeah. finishing close to home plate. We're six foot four, and you are right. Cuts down the distance to home plate, and that left arm is like a whip, just whipping through, and the ball explodes out of his hand. Another strikeout, fourth tonight, back to back K's for Justice here, and two gone. On back to back sliders once again, I mean, and that is so hard for a left handed hitter. That three-quarter delivery, that ball diving away from you. Parker Bates expected it, still not able to get the bat on it. Fastball to start the at-bat, back-to-back sliders, and second straight strikeout. Actually, it does jump off a little bit. It does, and then... Just love how he keeps his body square and then everything rotates at once. This ball is crushed out to left field and a home run for Steele Netterville. His 11th of the year. And that gets Louisiana Tech on the board here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Cut the deficit to six. Justice does not get the first pitch strike on the fastball and then just gets way too much of the plate with this inner half and still Netterville jumps all over it. The only question was whether or not this is gonna be fair or foul. It ends up fair and watch out in the student apartments back behind left field. Seventh home run of the year given up by Evan Justice. And this ball is crushed, and it is way gone into the night in Ruston. Back-to-back -back home runs 
for Netterville and McConnell. That one this went on the track. Louisiana, this is a Louisiana Tech team that has the utmost confidence in its ability late in games. And while the home runs are going loudly into the night, Louisiana Tech is not going quietly oh. into the night. He we stared this right one down. Away. Absolutely. Admired the work a little bit there. Back-to-back -back home runs, back-to-back -back pitches hit out of the ballpark by Louisiana Tech. I think you just want to come out and make sure that Evan Justice is in a good place mentally. You see the shrug there. Hey, we're fine. He threw, they jumped on two fastballs. We're all right. We're still up five runs. Clint Chrysler telling his pitcher, just shrug it off. Hey, let's keep it moving. Long way to go, but worth noting that this Louisiana Tech team did put up nine runs in the eighth inning last night against Ryder. All three runs in the inning, the two home runs with two outs. And here's Manny Garcia. And he grounds one foul up the third baseline. Two. Got him. So Justice with three strikeouts in the inning, but allows the back to back home runs from Netterville and McConnell. And NC State still up by five, but Louisiana Tech showing a little life here at the Love Shack. So a pair of home runs for Louisiana Tech. Brings them back within five as we head to the top of the nine. New pitcher on the mound, Kyle Griffin. And his numbers on the year, the ERA elevated at 9-2-5. Three and two record. against Old Dominion in the Conference USA Championship game when it in two-thirds, gave up three runs and three hits. 26th appearance. He's come up big for this Louisiana Tech team, particularly against lefty hitters, and he's going to face a couple to start off this inning. Johnny Butler and Terrell Tatum. So we were uh, we were talking, partner, about the ball not flying out of the ballpark, <laughs> and uh, I, th I think it's just because Louisiana Tech and NC State hadn't awakened the bats or hadn't programmed them to uh, to out of the ballpark setting, and now we got that. Eleven home runs in this regional so far. It's a long way from the South Bend regional, but it is. The ball certainly has been flying out, or the Knoxville regional. The ball's been flying out there too. Seen a lot of home runs across the country. All 16 regional sites. Ball jumping off the bat this year. It's Johnny Butler, two for three, double and a single, three RBIs tonight. Maybe three, four, five for the Wolfpack here in the top of the ninth. The momentum that Louisiana Tech got in the bottom of the last inning is absolutely huge, and you got to continue it here. You can't let NC State claw one back on you. Still got a lot of work to do down five, but it feels a lot different being down five going in the bottom of the ninth than being down six or seven. 
the other thing to worry to, to kind of think about too is the loser of this game again has to face off against Alabama tomorrow at 3 Eastern time. It's not as if you're playing at 9 a.m., but it is still a quick turnaround for these teams, whoever it may be. That's a really good point, partner. I mean, it, it's 11.15 Central Time right now. It's going to be a 2 p.m. game for uh, Central Time. I mean, these guys still have to eat, shower, right. go get in bed. You know, it'll be after midnight before that happens, and then you've got an early wake-up drive to the ballpark to get going. Here's a look at our bracket again. Uh, a winner game tonight, Louisiana Tech, NC State winner goes to the regional final. That team will have to be beaten twice by whoever wins against Alabama at 3 Eastern time. And, uh, it is really hard to come out of the loser's bracket and win a regional. The numbers bear that out. So you are in the driver's seat if you can start off 2-0 in a regional. O2 to Tatum. Just a bit low. It's a really good take on a tough pitch by Griffin. It's kind of like Justice comes from that three-quarter angle. Really tough on lefties. That slider, really dangerous. Line drive out to left field. And right there is McConnell. Good approach by Tatum, had the right idea, just didn't get enough on it to the opposite field. Now Griffin's just got one more out before Louisiana Tech sees if it's got any more magic left, any of that magic that they had in the Conference USA tournament. Well, a five-run deficit is certainly more manageable than an eight-run deficit. Going into the bottom of the ninth. Still a long way to go, though. <laughs> Not in NC State explode for the long ball yet today. Joyce would love that to cry and in this lead, but you know, Griffin's been tough, obviously, to the lefties, just being the first righty that he's faced. See if he uses the slider as liberally as he did against the left-handed hitters, or if he's got a change up in that repertoire that he breaks out for the righty. It's outside, three balls and a strike. To Torres, 0 for 4 today with a strikeout. And the scoring's been spread out for NC State. One in the first, one in the third, one in the fourth, three in the seventh, two in the eighth. That's a walk. And a walk brings up the always dangerous Luca Tresh. 13 home runs on the season, playing the fire a little bit here. Lifts this one out to left. Cole McConnell under, makes the catch. So we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Seven, eight, nine due up for Louisiana Tech. They got some work to do. <laughs> Welcome back. We head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Rustin, Louisiana is ready to roll. Bulldogs 
Down by five, work to do, but they got back-to-back -back home runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. And by the way, nobody has left this ballpark. <laughs> Well, you, you don't leave the club until they turn the lights on in that case. You don't leave Club Love Shack until they turn the lights off. Crowd getting excited, getting behind this team, and it is going to be a miraculous comeback if they're able to pull it off. They're going to have to do it against Evan Justice. Justice did give up the two home runs last inning, but a phenomenal NC State reliever. It's always a tough assignment to draw. So it'll be seven, eight, nine. Bottom of this order for Louisiana Tech has struggled tonight. And it'll start with George Corona, who is 0 for 3. Leadoff man here, so crucial. It's, it's crucial for a number of reasons. One, just the overall, you know, you need runs, so you need base runners. But from a confidence standpoint and belief in this rally, how big would it be to see that first batter reach base? You got the two-run homer from Steele Netterville. Follow that up by Cole McConnell. That's where the three runs came from for Louisiana Tech in the home half of the eighth. Swung on and missed there. Swung at that one that was probably out of the zone. You see Corona looking back and asking Steve Corby, our home plate umpire, if that was low. Almost certainly was. And now he's in a situation where Justice can go with the slider, but I think he goes back with the fastball here. And you know what? I love the fact in the ninth inning, Evan Justice shakes off the first call to go with the fastball. Wanting to go straight at Corona. Checks his swing there. Did he go around? He did not. Full count to Corona. Get Corona, you got a sit fastball here, react to anything else. He sat on it, but couldn't get a piece of lumber on it. And another strikeout for Evan Justice. He's got six through three innings tonight. Justice just buries this fastball down and in. And that is 93 miles an hour on the inside black. So tough for a right-handed hitter to get his bat down, keep his hands inside, and get contact on that ball. Five swinging strikeouts for Evan Justice of the six that he's got total. So Arkansas has just advanced to their regional final. If Arkansas indeed were to come out of the Fayetteville Regional, the winner of this regional would have a date with them in a super regional. Still work to do there in that Fayetteville Regional, however. And still work to do here in the bottom of the ninth with the Bulldogs down by five. 1-1. One, one. That's up and away. This one lined back up the middle and right there to make the catch is McDonough. Two gone. I think he dropped it. Oh, he dropped it. Wow, he had a beat on that, too. Absolutely. It kind of looked like this ball is tailing on oh. him a little bit. It's right on the heel of the glove and pops out. Frustrating for Tyler McDonough. This outfield's played fairly shallow all day. That time it paid dividends, but McDonough not able to wrangle it in. So that'll be an E8. And it's, it's 
sort of obvious to say, but this is, in my opinion, most crucial at bat of the game for Alex Ray because if you're able to get on base and get to the top of this lineup with only one out, this rally is alive and well. We got Taylor Young on deck, who's two for four tonight. The big thing is the top of this lineup has been the part that has powered all of these late inning rallies that we've talked about. I mean, comebacks over and over in that Conference USA tournament. Ball down in the dirt, swung on and missed. Two strikeouts in the inning, now two outs. Seventh for Justice. This is frustrating for Alex Ray, and, and certainly it's gonna be no more, no one more disappointed than he, but that, that's a it's a pretty poor at bat there at a crucial time. I mean, that pitch was thrown about 58 feet, and he swung and he offered at it and, and struck out on it. That, this juncture in the game, that just can't happen. Down to their last out, and Taylor Young. And he takes ball one. Louisiana Tech did score their three runs with two outs. Got the two-run home run from Steel Netterville. Followed that up by the home run from Cole McConnell. Back-to-back -back home runs for the Bulldogs in the bottom of the eighth. And a 2-0 count to the leadoff man, T.Y. See Luca Treff trying to calm Evan Justice down, maybe overthrowing a little bit on the first two pitches of that at bat. Evan Justice well aware who's up at bat, top of the lineup. Justice, the 2-1. Pop foul out of play. And it's 2-2 two and two down to their final strike tonight. The ever so dangerous Hunter Wells awaits on deck. Called strike three to end the game. How about Evan Justice in eight strikeouts to finish off a very dangerous Bulldog offense. And NC State improves to 2-0 and in the regional, and they move to a regional final tomorrow. NC State in the driver's seat now. An 8-3 win. I think you have to give a lot of credit to the guys on the mound for NC State today. Those two guys, Sam Heifel, Evan Justice, got them to the regional final. They'll play tomorrow, Sunday at 7 p.m. The winner of Louisiana Tech and Alabama. Louisiana Tech's got a quick turnaround, but this was all about the Wolfpack here today. So NC State certainly in the driver's seat. Louisiana Tech going to have to turn the page awfully quickly. They will take on Alabama at 3 Eastern time tomorrow so I am sure that the Love Shack is going to be packed tomorrow for that game again our final score eight to three that'll do it for us here in Ruston for Roddy Jones our entire crew I'm Sam Ravitch go ahead and throw you over to all ACC starting right now <laughs>